O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship Him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into His presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to Him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in His hand. The strength of the hills is His also. The sea is His, for He made it, and His hand formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship Him. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. And Jesus answered him, We are right. And the Jews answered him, And are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Amen, amen, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. And the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. 
Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it, and he was glad. The Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. And so they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went away in the temple. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. M433. You may be seated. <laughs> glory be to Jesus. But you have not known him, 
I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Thus far the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> what is hidden beneath our gospel text, and between the jargon of the Jews, and in between the questions that are asked, we find something even deeper. Even from the most topical, simply read understanding of our text, we know that Christ is God. However, in our text there is something that is even deeper, as I said. This goes all the way back to a Trinitarian understanding of theology. In Genesis 1, we see the Trinity outright, clear in the open. God spoke. That is the word of the Lord. And we oftentimes can get confused that when Jesus speaks, that He is speaking the word of the Lord. Now that's true. However, when He speaks, He speaks out of His own nature. He doesn't speak as one who has memorized all of the things that God would have him to say and then regurgitates them. He did not have Luther's small catechism memorized. He did not have the epistles of St. Paul memorized. He did not have direct revelation from God to him as if he were merely one of us. Of course, we don't believe in the intranos anyway. We believe in the written Word of God. And in that written Word of God, we know that we are sinners deserving of death and that Christ Himself saved us from those sins. So when I say that Christ doesn't speak outside... When he, when he speaks God's Word, He's not speaking it as if He were merely a preacher. He's speaking out of His nature. John 1 tells us that Jesus is the Word of God. So in Genesis 1, when God speaks creation into being, He is speaking Jesus. Jesus is the hands that mold Adam from the dust. Jesus is the one who creates light and darkness. Jesus is the one who separates the sea and the land. So when Jesus speaks in all of his speech, he speaks out of his nature. He can do no other, so help him himself. So when Jesus says... So what Jesus says, and when Jesus says it, we know that it's the gospel truth because He speaks out of His nature. We are sinners. Sinners by nature. Sinful and unclean. Thus we speak out of our own nature. We lie. We speak to hurt one another. We uh, destroy with our tongues. We cut each other with that sharp object that we call the tongue, we are out to persuade with our voices to get our own way, etc. And outside of the regeneration of baptism, that's what we do and that's all we do and we're really, really good at it. We speak out of our nature. And when we speak out of our nature, we become used car salesmen trying to sell a jalopy that we have created of our own devices. Um, however, when Christ speaks, 
He speaks a word of truth that is able to cut through all of that garbage that we speak. It cuts straight through all of the words that we use to hurt, harm, destroy, uh, sell, or whatever it may be. He cuts directly through it. And it really, really, really gets on our nerves. We don't like it. We don't like when Christ speaks the truth to us. We don't like when His under-shepherds speak the truth to us. The fastest way to get people huddled in masses in the church to speak uh, evils about the pastor, his family, or one another is to preach the Gospel. Because when you preach the Gospel, it's adverse to our nature. We don't like it. We don't want to hear it. And as Luther says, preach the Word in such a way that if the people do not come to hate their sins, they come to hate you instead. That's a burden that pastors in orthodoxy, in faithfulness, not one who tickles the ears, have to live with. And it's quite unfortunate that their spouses and families have to live with it also. But Luther's right. If I don't preach to you your sins, I preach you into hell. If I don't preach to you that you should repent of your sins, then I do not preach you into heaven. I preach, I in my nature, speak many sins and many ills. And yet we wear, we pastors wear this collar, hopefully, we like to think that pastors wear their collar rather than polos. You know, we'll be dressed for uh, church and not for the golf course. Because, and also, I'm going to make this side note, black is the only color. If you see pastors wearing green, purple, or any other color, except white on Christmas and Easter. I make that allowance for myself, so don't say anything to me about it. The reason is because the black that we wear, and even in this Cossack and surplus, the black that we wear shows that we are sinners, doomed to death. And yet the white shows that we are baptized, and that covers the blackness and covers the death. Likewise, a pastor who wears a collar, and if you've ever wondered why I wear one all the time, is it because it reminds me and it should remind you that my nature is sinful and unclean, black, deserving of death. And yet there's this white, always by the vocal cords, because the pastor doesn't speak from his own nature. He speaks the Word of God. That's why we wear collars. To remind you that I am a sinner, yet the words that I speak, I do not speak out of my nature, but out of Christ's Word. And so when, Luke, when Christ looks at the Jews and speaks to them, they are trying to sort of trying to capture him in his speech, but really we're beyond that point. We're beyond that capture in his speech point. We're at the point where we're going to destroy him. I mean, our text ends at they picked up stones to throw at him. So we're beyond that point of trying to catch him in his speech because he finally said it at least to, the, to those hearers. He finally said it. They say, because Christ gives, gives them a promise and all of His disciples a promise, and the promise that I speak to you today, not out of my own nature, but out of the Word of God. 
Christ says, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Amen, amen, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste or see death. And in that, we have true comfort. Because in that blackness, in your nature, you can't keep the Word. You can't keep the law. It's just a reality. And so we need a surrogate. We need a vicar. We need someone to go on our behalf. And so, amen, amen, how great it is that Abraham longed to see the day of Jesus and he saw it and he was glad, even though he was dead. Because out of the second person of the Trinity, the same one who spoke creation into existence, likewise created Abraham. And Abraham, when he died, rejoiced in the day of the second person of the Trinity, of Christ who created all things. And then, when Christ, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, came forth from the world, into the world, Abraham rejoiced in heaven. And Christ says here that the Father Himself honors Christ and that the glory is given to Christ through the Father. Therefore, of course Abraham rejoiced and was glad in the day of Christ because Abraham was assumed into heaven through God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What's not to rejoice about? What is there not to be glad about? And Christ Himself says, Your father Abraham rejoiced when he would see my day. And the Jews said to, the, to, said to him, and I love this, especially being a young pastor, you aren't old enough to have seen Abraham. Now I'm paraphrasing. You aren't even 50 years old. And you said you saw our father Abraham. Note that. Our father Abraham. Christ, instead of saying, you do not know your father, nor my father. He doesn't say that, though he could. He says, Amen, Amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, Yahweh, I am. The very, he said the very name of God. He said His own name. Before Abraham was, Yahweh. I am. I am the Christ. I am the second person of the Trinity. I was there when creation was created. And without me, nothing was created. Therefore, I have the power of recreation. And that's where we can rejoice and be glad. Because though we speak out of our nature, though we are black as pitch, though we love, to cut down one another with that tongue of ours. Though we hate one another, Christ is the one of creation and therefore recreation. And so by the cross, that was exactly what was happening. I, after I am lifted up, will draw all men to myself. And there we have the recreation of who we are. Baptized in baptism, we are baptized, regenerated, and made whole. And it allows us to stand in the face of any coronavirus, any other thing that we have to fear, and say, I am not destined to remain in this world forever. My Father, through His Son, Jesus Christ, has created a mansion for us. And in this life, we are not merely surviving it. We are made and recreated to confess Christ and Him crucified and resurrected. 
Outside of that, we marry. We marry with same values, same virtues. We procreate to instill those values and virtues, all centered around Christ the crucified, so that when we die, we live. And we instill in our little ones, in Shawnee, that as you continue through this world, long after we're gone, you confess Christ, the crucified, and you continue this. Because regardless of virus, regardless of the world that hate us, regardless of what may come in the future, what has come in the past, this is what we know. Before Abraham was, before others shall be, I am. And that verb, that name, is a promise and a constant for you that nothing in this life can take your life away. Nothing can take what Christ has given you. And so, throughout the day, touch your forehead. Make the sign of the cross. Wash your face. Remember your baptism. Because out of that, you are able to say, I am baptized into the great I am. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. 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 We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is he who transgression is, forgive, is forgiven whose sin is put away. He was delivered unto death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. Just
majesty, your adorable true and only Son. And so the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, you are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. When you took upon yourself to deliver man, you humbled yourself to be born of a virgin. When you had overcome the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You sit at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that you will come to and death before we enter into eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and continue steadfast in the true faith to the end of our lives that we may know the peace and joy of the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak. May the prayers of those who are in tribulation and distress cry to you graciously that you would come before them so 
that in every situation they may recognize and receive your gracious help, comfort, and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, your thoughts are not our thoughts, and your ways are not our ways. In your wisdom, you have permitted this disastrous pandemic to befall us. We implore you, let not our hearts, not, let not the hearts of your people despair, nor our faith fail us, but sustain us and comfort us. Direct all efforts to attend the injured, console the bereaved, and protect the helpless. Bring hope and healing that we may find relief and restoration through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, You have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with Your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by Your governance, may be righteous in Your sight. Through Jesus Christ, Your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.